Assalamu alaikum YouTube viewers. Today in this video, I am going to describe you some properties of Hermitian operator. So the first property says that the eigenvalues of a Hermitian operator are real. Okay. The first property says that the eigenvalues of the Hermitian operator are real. Real means that they does not contain that they do not contain the iota in them. Okay. So what are the eigenvalues of Hermitian operator? As you know that in an eigenvalue equation, in an eigenfunction equation, the eigenfunction here is psi. I have taken an example in which I have taken a psi as an eigenfunction on which an operator A is applied. Okay. Let us say that there is a function psi which I say is an eigenfunction on which an operator A which is a Hermitian operator is being applied. So on applying the operator on psi the answer that I get is A into psi. Since as you know that in eigenvalues in eigenvalue equation the eigenfunction is repeated on the right hand side. So this was the eigenfunction and this same function is repeated on the right hand side of the equation. So this uh, this whole is the eigenvalue equation. Okay. And this A here is the real eigenvalue being multiplied with the eigenfunction. Okay. This was the eigenfunction and after the application of operator on this eigenfunction I get the same function in the product. Okay, I get the same uh, function in the product and also a real eigenvalue. I have to prove that this value here is a real eigenvalue. This value here does not contain iota. Okay, the property says that when a Hermitian operator is applied on an eigenfunction, okay, when an a Hermitian operator is applied on an eigenfunction, then I get a real eigenvalue. So I have to prove that this value here is a real eigenvalue and this value does not contain iota in it. So let's just say that I have a function psi, okay, let me change the marker. I have a function psi on which an operator A is applied, okay. So the answer comes out to be A psi, okay. Let's just call it the equation number 1. So next, let's take the complex conjugate. On taking the complex conjugate, here comes the hysteric sign. Okay, after the application of repeater, the answer comes out to be A psi. A hysteric and psi hysteric. Okay, so let's just call it equation number 2. Now, consider the equation number 1. Consider equation 1 okay on considering equation number 1 I am going to write the same equation here is equal to a psi now if uh, I multiply this equation by multiply by psi hysteric and taking integration and taking integration I get an answer equal to okay what I am going to do is just multiplying by psi so hysteric and taking integration integration psi hysteric a psi d tau which is the volume element here and I also have to multiply the right hand side so integration psi hysteric a psi d tau okay so this is what my left hand side and the right hand side of the equation becomes so the next thing is as you know that a here is a constant so it will go out of the integration the left hand side of the equation is just the same while the while in the right hand side of the equation this a will go out of the integration and the rest is psi hysteric into psi d tau okay so the next thing that we are going to do now i am going to take the second equation first of all what i did i took the first equation okay i took the first equation here and i multiplied it by psi hysteric and took the integration okay so now after doing this i am now going to take the second equation okay now i'm going to write consider second equation consider equation 2. So what the equation 2 says? The equation 2 is, as you can see, the equation 2 is here. So operator being applied on psi, here is the complex, gives out a hysteric, psi hysteric. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is just multiply the equation number 2 by psi and taking integration. Okay, what I'm going to do is multiply 
by psi and taking integration okay consider the difference here i had applied the equation one with psi hysteric and then took integration whereas in this part i have multiplied by psi and took the integration here i had multiplied the psi hysteric and here i had multiplied i have multiplied with psi so what will be the answer the answer says as you can see if i multiply this equation this part of the equation by psi and take integration the answer comes out to be just like this a psi hysteric d tau gives out psi into a hysteric psi hysteric d tau okay as you can as you know that this part here is a constant so it will go out of the integration so what will be the answer the answer will be equal to psi a operator psi hysteric d tau is equal to integration psi and since a had gotten out so here is our a hysteric psi hysteric d tau okay so now compare the equations let's just call it equation number four and this equation that i had derived from equation number one let's just call it equation number three so considering the equation number three here and equation number four here if we compare equation number three and equation number four you can see that the left hand side of both the equation is same in this part the left hand side of the equation the left hand side of the equation here says integration over psi hysteric a psi whereas this part says integration psi into a psi hysteric okay first of all i'm going to write the equation number three again so for, for your uh, easiness i'm going to write the equation number three again so i'm writing the equation number three again um, here is our equation number three equation number three says psi hysteric a psi d tau is equal to integration a integration psi hysteric psi d tau so this was my equation number three okay this was my equation number three and this here is the equation number four so now as you know that this a here is a hermitian operator as we have told earlier that we have taken a to be a hermitian operator so what was the rule of hermitian operator the hermitian operator has a rule that i'm going to write here with a different color let's just say i'm going to write this with purple here what was the rule of the hermitian operator the hermitian operator uh, had a rule that if from uh, minus infinity to positive infinity i have psi hysteric of function and an operator a is applied on another function phi okay d tau the answer comes out to be equal to from minus infinity to positive infinity so phi operator being applied on psi hysteric d tau okay so the hermitian operator had a rule that if my operator is being applied on uh, phi and the next time my operator is being applied on the psi hysteric the answer of both of these equation is same so if i compare these two equations here okay if i uh, compare these two equations here here the operator a is being applied on psi and here the operator a is being applied on psi hysteric so if i say that a is a hermitian operator so these both both of these equations are same the left hand side of this equation and let, uh, left hand side of this equation are same so i can say that the left hand side of equation 4 and 3 is same since the left hand side of the both equation same so i can write as a hysteric psi psi hysteric d tau is equal to a psi hysteric psi d tau so i can take the right hand side of both of the equation to be equal since the left hand side as as i've written that left hand side of the equation 4 and equation 3 are equal so i can also take the right hand side of the equation 4 and 3 to be equal so i've taken right hand side of the equation 4 and 3 to be equal so now as you can see that this part here and this part here is same so i can cut this part with this part so the remaining is a hysteric is equal to a which proves that our complex conjugate of a is just another real number 
okay so since this was the real number so i can say that here a hysteric is also equal to the real number so this is the proof that says that here a that a here is a real eigenvalue so this was our uh, one of the property of Hermitian operator so let's move on towards the next property that we'll be describing in the next video